Hello everyone and welcome back to the DeHart House. My name is Alicia and this is video number three in my self-guided color study. So in the previous two videos, I took you through my wool preparation, dyeing of the wool, and then uh, preparing the wool to blend the colors to create the whole rainbow and color wheel. <laughs> So in this third video, I'm going to take you through my spinning process. And I have all three finished yarns sitting in front of me. I'm very excited to share them with you. But before I do that, let me take you through some of my video footage of creating these three yarns. I have divided each of the colors up into thirds. So I've made three packages of all 12 colors. And so each of these has roughly the same amount of each color. Um, I didn't want to divide up any of the Rolex. So some of these, instead of having six grams of each color uh, some of them have seven grams some of them have five um, but I did try to switch up which group got seven and which groups got five so these stacks are almost all the same weight these two are 68 grams and this one is 69 grams total so all in all I did a pretty good job of dividing up the colors evenly so each stack has all 12 colors. And so my plan is to spin one of these, probably this one. Uh, one of these is going to be spun uh, chain ply. So I will spin it through the rainbow and get a self-striping rainbow colorway. And I think what I'll do is instead of going through the rainbow multiple times I think I'll have it just be one gradient yarn where it starts with red and ends with purple uh, and goes through the rainbow so that's what I'm gonna do with this bundle with the second bundle I think I want to try um, a fractal spinning technique so still playing with the rainbow but instead of being a chain ply preserving the colors um, to be one big block of color uh, i'd like to play around with fractal spinning on this second bundle and then probably by the time i'm done with these two i might be a little bit rainbowed out <laughs> and wanting to play around with different color sequences. So I think with this last bundle, I might do just random colors. Um, at this point, that's what I'm planning. I think the last one I'm going to leave open depending on how the first two spins go. And then I may just decide to um, spin, do a two ply where one one ply is warm colors and this, the other ply are cool colors. I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so this third bundle is basically yet to be determined. But I'm thinking even just a putting all the Rolex in a bag and then picking out, closing my eyes and picking out a random color uh, and creating a random color scheme but I'll leave some wiggle room in that one in case I change my mind later on and I think of a, a different technique that I still um, have yet to try but uh, chain ply with the self striping I played around a little bit with on my drop spindle but I'd really like to try that with this basically rainbow and then fractal spinning is something I've watched a lot of videos on and really want to try. So I think that would be fun to experiment with. And then the third one, we'll see.
I spun up this bobbin last night with one of the three bundles. This is the chain ply bobbin. All 12 colors are on here, all in one of these little bobbins for my traditional Ashford spinning wheel. So I started with the um, red purple and spun all the way to purple. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is chain plying this in order to preserve the colors to get this um, self-striping or gradient version of the yarn. So I'm going to be showing you how I chain ply this. So I have my wheel all set up with a fresh bobbin and I have a leader on here that helps me get started. I spun the singles in the clockwise direction, which is Z twist. So to ply, I'll be spinning in the counterclockwise direction, which is S twist. Um, my Lazy Kate is a box <laughs> and um, all I do is stick a straight knitting needle through the sides, um, going through the bobbin in the box. And uh, it's very rudimentary. And I have my extra bobbins underneath. So nothing special here <laughs> uh, with this. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking the singles from here and then chain plying it onto this new bobbin. Chain plying is one of those things that I don't do very often on a spinning wheel because it's um, it's tough for me to maintain the loop without breaking it. Um, chain plying is something I'm happy to do on a drop spindle. I feel like I have a lot more control and I'm not trying to, you know, maintain any kind of speed on my wheel, um, things like that. Um, but I feel like when I'm pulling the singles through this loop, I put a lot of um, stress and tension on that loop and it tends to break which is not good <laughs> um, the technique of chain plying requires that loop but I feel like I am even with this rhythm I've gotten into here I feel like I'm definitely getting better And I, I can only get better if I practice. <laughs> so, yeah, this yarn had a bit of a rough start here in the plying, but that's okay, right? And this is a, a woolen prep, so every once in a while I'm finding these thicker bits to try to 
squish the air out of and make this just a little bit more of a consistent yarn. But yeah, I'm just going to keep keep applying. So I have broken the loop <laughs> uh, quite a few times already during this process, and I'm only on the blue color. But um, uh, I feel like I'm I'm finding my rhythm, and that this is working out really well. And oh, look, we're gonna move into blue green. I absolutely love spinning. It's a craft. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I wanted to pursue spinning. Because um, I liked, I, I, and I still do, like knitting and crocheting so very much. Um, but also the process of creating the yarn with which I knit and crochet is, oh, it's so much fun. Um, I've always been interested in learning how, how things work, how things are made. Um, I, I love science. I, I mean, I have a, a master's degree in mathematics. I teach college mathematics and um, I love learning and I will always have this curiosity and so it just kind of made sense that I was curious how yarn was made and <laughs> wanted to learn that process for myself so So here's my nitty naughty, just out of So here's my nitty naughty that uh, Michael helped me make out of PVC pipe. And uh, I really should glue some of these pieces together. It completely comes apart, which is great for storage, but um, anyway. So with them twisted so they're offset, I'm going to start pulling the yarn off this bobbin. So I've loosened the tension on my drive band. I've removed the brake band, even turned this so the hooks are facing down. So hopefully this doesn't get stuck on any of those. And I start by just tying a simple, just once over knot here. And then I hold it with my uh, hand and I'll go around my nitty knotty a couple of times. I'll try to put this over top of that knot so that once I get two or three times around here, I won't have to hold that knot with my hand anymore. And then I can really just get going in the groove. Why is my... Um, okay. Because the bobbin is so full and <laughs> it's rubbing against the flyer a little bit. Yep. But look at that color. It's so... Oh, it's so pretty. The spin of this uh, Shetland wool was fantastic, I have to say. Um, so I've spun, to date, uh, merino wool, which is delightful. I've spun Coopworth, which um, 
I did purchase raw, so it required washing, and I don't know if Coopworth is naturally a very greasy <laughs> wool, uh, but it was very greasy, and even after several washes, um, still had some grease in it when spinning. So it did add um, a bit of resistance to drafting. Um, the Shetland wool, I'd say, was more like spinning merino. It was easy to draft, easy to work with. It feels soft, it feels clean, um, and the beautiful colors certainly help. Um, oh yeah, look at this gorgeous rainbow emerging. Oh, I love these greens and blues. I think that's probably my favorite part. Are these greens and blues? Oh, look at that. I'm seeing some purple underneath. Oh, just all the colors, you guys. It's fantastic. There we go. Yeah, I'm very excited to knit with this. So I'll use this end to tie a figure eight around my yarn. And then I'll do the same thing with the other end. Oh, it's down here. All I have to do is bring it out from underneath the other strands and then that knot comes out very easily. And it looks like this will get tied pretty much next to the other one just because that's how the just how the yarn worked out the two ends are pretty close to each other which means i definitely need to get something else because these two figure eight ties are here Ooh. this strand does not belong on this side See if I can untie this. And I like to have one, um, at least one tie per section here, so at least four ties two ties here but I want one over here as well it just keeps um, it just keeps the yarn uh, organized when washing okay so I can take this off my Nitty Naughty. And as you can see, it has a bit of twist in it. It's naturally wanting to twist, but you can also see, look at the colors. I mean, Colors are amazing, just amazing.
So for my second skein, I'm spinning this fractally. So what I've already done <laughs> is I've taken my fiber and I've split each color in two. So um, for the fractal spin, what I'm going to do is spin one bobbin where the half of each color gets just spun straight as one big um, stripe in one of the singles, while the other half is going to get divided into 12 small sections. And the idea is that for each color, long color repeat in one single, hopefully on the second single, all 12 colors will also go along with this. So what I've done is I've spun up the bobbin with the long color repeats. So that's already done. <laughs> uh, on the second bobbin, I'm going to be spinning up the small repeats. So I put them in little plastic bags because they're so small and there's 12 of them. And I don't have 12 baskets to just dedicate to this. So um, these are plastic bags that I'll just keep here in the craft room and reuse them. Uh, but in each bag, uh, I have 12 little bits, uh, one bit of each of the 12 colors. And so the idea is that all 12 of these colors should go through purple and then and then the next 12 will go through blue purple and then the next 12 will go through blue etc um, for the two plies so <laughs> uh, like I said I already spun the first bobbin which just has the long color repeats that was really very easy so this is half of this chunk of fiber and the other half is sitting here in these bags and so this is going to be a two ply fractal spin <laughs> um, so yeah I did a lot of weighing on my scale and to take uh, and divide each color into half um, so yeah we'll see how this works out as a two ply yarn
so the first skein turned out really well so this is the chain ply where I spun this uh, through the rainbow so I started with red purple and then work through red red orange orange etc all the way to purple and so in the chain plying I could keep the colors with themselves so blue was plied with blue red with was plied with red etc <laughs> um, so yeah it turned out just just spectacular I think it looks really awesome um, and then this uh, the second skein is the fractal spin uh, to ply <laughs> so one of the plies I spun start to finish starting with red purple all the way to purple same as this one um, in long sequences and then in the second ply I did that same sequence but shorter 12 times <laughs> um, so oh my gosh this is probably my favorite I'm really excited to knit with this um, so this is a two ply this here is a three ply and then the last skein I decided to do another two ply but um, I spun it so that with the intention that the opposite colors would line up so red and green would be plied together blue and orange would be plied together etc um, not that it necessarily turned out that way there are some uh, little nips here I'll have to continue to pick out of this yarn <laughs> it was hard to pick it out while spinning but uh, yeah so this definitely has a different um, different look to it and I love how all three skeins look different you can tell they are different um, but they're they're cohesive and that you can kind of tell they come from the same fiber <laughs> so um, the first skein here is a three ply like I said these all roughly weigh the same amount right around 68 grams um, but the three ply here is 108 yards the two pi two ply fractal is 220 yards and the two ply here with the opposite colors this is 134 yards so I did spin this one with the singles a little bit thicker than this one um, hence having less yardage um, I also have some yarn some of, the, some of the singles from these two here still left on the bobbins that were left over from the two ply where one of the plies ran out before the other one <laughs> um, as opposed to the chain ply where I used all of it um, but yeah I just love how these three skeins look so I'll um, unfold them so you can see more here you can definitely see this is gonna just I mean it is going to knit up and look like a rainbow <laughs> um, because of the chain ply keeping the colors together with no barber pulling um, so yeah this is just gonna knit up and it's going to look like a rainbow which is fantastic um, the fractal here has well a lot of barber pulling <laughs> but it still very much goes through you know the reds to the purples because of one of the plies um, being spun up that way so it will still be rainbow ish just with uh, with barber pulling in it so it should be interesting to see knit up and then the 
the two ply where um, I was trying to get opposite colors to line up. Um, I mean, this is just going to look very different. I don't know if I'm going to get, well, because each ply only covers half of the rainbow. It's not going to come across necessarily as a rainbow. But yeah, I was curious if I plied the opposite colors together, I knew it would look more muddied, more um, blended than being, you know, full on rainbow. And it does, it does look that way. I was curious if it would look somewhat gray or brown, you know? Um, but you can still see the, the colors in here. So yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy with my results. It, it was very fun to play around and see how, how, you know, spinning your yarn, how, how you prepare it and how do you plan your yarn, um, you really can get different products here. So just because everyone's purchasing the same fiber doesn't mean it's going to spin up and be the same yarn, which is just, you know, leaves so many possibilities for creativity. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So, um, yeah, so that's the yarn that I got from this color study. So I guess all I have to do now is decide what to knit. So, you know, if you guys have any ideas, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Um, I'm still searching for patterns. I, I, um, the intention of this was to create this yarn. So we'll see what I can knit up. <laughs>